Amendment number six directs the president to withdraw the U.S. from NATO. My amendment would direct the president withdrawal from NATO. They are not a reliable partner whose defense spending should be paid for by American citizens. The 2023 NATO summit is underway, and it comes in the midst of what is truly the most tenuous time in the region since the Cold War. The biggest news out of the summit so far has been President Joe Biden's firm stance that Ukraine will not join NATO at present, and his hesitancy to provide Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky with any official timeline for entry. Now, this is a move that is actually being championed on both the left and the right, myself included, for good reason, reasons I will get into in a minute. But of course, when there is a shred of consensus building, people like Marjorie Taylor Greene have to burn it all down. So she is now arguing for the U.S. to completely leave NATO, blaming European countries for not holding up their part of the treaty. She went on to introduce additional amendments to her bill, including bans on the U.S. sending long-range weapons and F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine, arguing that doing so would, quote, escalate the proxy war with Russia. And here's the thing that's so frustrating about people like Green. Her sentiments about the blank check from the Pentagon to fund the war in Ukraine and her disturbance about the lack of debate about these funds, these sentiments are important and they are shared by a vast portion of the American people on the left and the right. In the wake of the news that Biden will provide Ukraine with cluster bombs, a weapon that is banned by hundreds of countries across the globe, and considered by many Americans to be war crimes, it has never been more important to call for de-escalation. Um, there are reports of illegal cluster bombs and vacuum bombs being used by the Russians. Is there a red line for how much violence uh, will be tolerated against civilians in this manner that's illegal and potentially a war crime? It is. It would be. I don't have any confirmation of that. We have seen the reports. Uh, if, if that were true, it would potentially be a war crime. On the other hand, Biden announcing he doesn't currently see a path for Ukraine to join NATO should be a welcome sigh of relief. If Ukraine joins NATO, Article 5 in that shared treaty states that since member countries must come to the defense of all other members, the United States would effectively be instantly in a direct war with Russia. But instead of giving Biden credit for that decision or rallying with the people who actually agree with her on the need for more robust debate and things like stopping specific weapons shipments, Green has to up the ante, call for the U.S. to leave NATO, and blow up her anti-war credibility. Because the truth is that Marjorie Taylor Greene has no intention of actually working with Democrats or centrist Republicans to fight the military-industrial complex. She'll just say whatever gets her the most headlines. And I think Republicans need to always remember that and never forget it. And we have to understand the enemy that we're dealing with. This isn't the party that we should work with across the aisle because you can't work with communists and you can't work with liars and you can't work with cheaters. We need to treat them exactly how they are. It's a strange world where Marjorie Taylor Greene not being willing to reach across the aisle actually enrages me because while it's not for honorable motives, there needs to be more pushback on the Ukraine war in Congress and how the United States can be a broker of peace and not continued violence. Thanks so much. For more of my coverage on The Breakdown, you can check out my latest video on MAGA moms cheering for Trump over his ridiculous proposal by clicking on the link in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching. You can follow me on all platforms at carojohnson917.